Hey guys, the Network Burger here. Hope you're doing well. In this video, we will be looking at how to install an OpenSense firewall on a virtual machine, on a virtual piece of hardware. And what I love about open source type of solutions like this, you could really take this and load this onto whatever you want. If you had an old computer, you could take this CD image and install it on that old computer. You'd be able to use that as a firewall. So that is so cool in my opinion. And I've been doing a lot of research on some open source firewalls. I've made some videos on alternatives already, but I feel like I'm very happy with what I've seen with OpenSense. It has a very welcoming community and there is a ton of resources that you can go through and it's actually quite straightforward to set up. There are some quirks that I've had to figure out as well, but since I'm doing this video to show you how to set everything up, hopefully that will help you avoid some of these little roadblocks that I personally ran into. So let's get into the video. All right, so I'm on the OpenSense website, which seems like a great place to start off this video because before we do any setup bits, I actually just want to talk about OpenSense itself. Now, let's just go into the About Us section and see what is OpenSense, what, what's going on here. And there you can read, basically, OpenSense started as a fork of the PFSense project, which means it basically branched off using the PFSense source code back in the day. And PFSense is also just taking a fork of something that we call MonoWall, but OpenSense decided, okay, there's some stuff that maybe we want to do. So we're just going to take on this project ourselves and maintain our own type of code and do our own stuff on it. So that is where that kind of started. So OpenSense is just that fork of PFSense. It is totally open source, but it's just so that they can maintain and develop it in a way that they want to. So it's a different company. And this is why you'll also see there's a, a lot of similarities between something like OpenSense, FP, and Sense, you'll see there's um, a lot of configuration steps are the same because it's kind of working the same way. It's running off of FreeBSD and it's just there to offer us some front end to access and get into all of these plugins and codes and stuff that we can actually build our firewall or network fabric off of. Now, there's a bunch of core features that they have here. Um, but I just want to navigate back to the homepage because I think if I scroll down here, this looks pretty cool. You can see there's a bunch of different stuff that you can do um, using OpenSense. One of the big game changers for me was when I saw Zero Tier is actually a part of OpenSense. So there's a plugin that you can install on your OpenSense firewall to run Zero Tier, and then you can connect to the Zero Tier network. And it is so cool. I'm really happy that I found this. There's also a bunch of other stuff, web filtering you can do. Intrusion detection is loaded onto the firewall from the beginning. There is also some quirks with that and I'll make some separate videos, but this firewall can do a bunch of different things. Even if we're just using the stock standard version that I'm going to be using and be labbing with. All right, so how do we actually get this? Well, let's download it. So I'll head onto the downloads tab. And then from here, we need to decide what are we going to install? So just make sure your architecture, that you select the correct architecture. Here I see I can only select AMD64. And now you need to set up what type of disk you want to get. So make sure you read this properly. But I'm going to use an ISO installer. So I need to make sure I select the DVD option. Because if you don't select that, you're going to be running into some issues. And then you can select the mirror. So there's quite a wide variety of places you can download this from. And that's just what the mirror is, where you can get this image. So I might just say I want to get it from uh, Germany, this uh, Cloudflare CDN. All right, so we can just click on this download button and then it will download a packaged version of the ISO, which you just need to extract onto your machine afterwards. Now I'm just going to head to the next step because I've already have an extracted image. So I'll just go onto my hypervisor and mine is VMware Workstation, but it could be whatever hypervisor you're using. And let's just create a new virtual machine for this. So I'll just create a new virtual machine. I'll follow the prompts. I'll tell it I want to install the operating system later. I'll select other and then use FreeBSD 1264-bit. Give the virtual machine a name. So I'll make this OpenSense 2 because I already have an OpenSense VM running. And let's just set where we want to save this drive. So I might save this under my G on OpenSense 2, which I just created for this as well. And we can just continue. I'll leave the disk size at 20 gig for now, um, but this depends on your sizing and what type of stuff you want to do with this firewall. Maybe 20 gig is also a bit too big, but I'll just leave it at that. And important, make sure you customize your hardware. 
because here's a few things you need to tweak. Firstly, the memory, we can push this up to something we're comfortable with. So depending on what you want to do with the firewall, you're obviously going to need some additional resources. So let's say if you do want to do stuff like the IDS, uh, that can be quite memory hungry. So just make sure that you push that up to what you're comfortable with. So if you're going to do stuff like IDS, I might recommend pushing this between two and four gig. But the more stuff you run, the more you're gonna have to size this, size this firewall up. So I'll just use eight gig as a baseline for me because I have the available memory. But this depends on your own system and what your requirements are. But for my lab in purposes, eight gig is good for me. Now I can set my processors. I'll just bump this up to the max that I can because this is how big my actual CPU is. And then this VA can just kind of inject into my resources to use as much as it can. And important, make sure you set the ISO image because this is what we're going to load from to actually install the operating system. So I'll use an ISO file and I'll just navigate to where that extracted image is of the OpenSense firewall. So here is my ISO, that DVD ISO. And next step, make sure you add an additional NIC or network adapter so that you actually have a LAN and a WAN facing interface. Reason for this is so that you can actually quickly configure the firewall because the firewall by default doesn't allow anything to access it on its WAN interface. And if you set the LAN interface and you don't have a WAN, then you're just gonna get onto it and configure the basics but it's it's kind of like defeating the purpose you you want one way to get into your actual LAN and DMZ networks and whatever and you want one way to get out to the rest of the world and the internet it doesn't just have to be one one you could have two WAN links and two down links to your switches and actual environments and stuff but it's just a baseline at, at the very minimum have one LAN and one WAN interface so my first NIC is just for my NAT, which will use a hypervisor IP to break out. And my second NIC will be for a virtual network that's going to be running to my Ubuntu virtual machine. And that is it. This is all that we need to actually get this running. So I'll just close this off. I'll finish the setup and then I'll start up this virtual machine. So let's power this bad boy up and let's just maximize this. And here you'll already see a lot of similarities between this and the other firewall, PFSense. Here's where you're gonna be caught out like maybe I was caught out in the beginning. So this is why it's great that I'm making this video because I'm sort of making it for other people that don't read all the prompts exactly the way that you should be reading them. Um, it's, it's like that joke where you get like this big license and then you just click yes without actually reading anything, uh, which is probably a bad thing, so. Just something to take note of when you actually run this installation because it's basically installing a bare bones version and this will also allow you to demo the product from the CD. But we actually want to um, do stuff ourselves. Now it's telling me a uh, default interface not found, running interface assignment. No, I don't want to do any lags. I don't want to do any VLANs right now. Now you can see I've got my two virtual NICs here, EM0 and EM1. So for WAN, I will use EM0. And for my LAN, I will use EM1. And I'll just continue on. So now it's set the WAN and LAN interfaces appropriately. And I can just say I want to proceed. And that should be the very basics of getting everything up and running. But this isn't us actually being done with the setup now. There's a few additional steps we actually need to do. So we're just waiting for the firewall to actually boot up so we can start the actual installation process. So this is... Um, very important. All right, so the firewall is up. Now, please make sure you read the prompts. Let me just show you what happened to me. I didn't read this welcome message because I thought, hey, this is just like a welcome message. But it says OpenSense is running in live mode from install media. So this is actually running from your CD now. Please log in as root to continue in live mode. So this allows you to demo it or as installer to start the installation. So this is where we actually need to install login as installer if you log in as root here you're just demoing the firewall really and your password is open sense let me just backspace this open sense all right now we get a bunch of prompts and this is basically like uh, similar to pfsense now so we just continue here i will install this using zfs if i use ufs i can't go higher than 8 gig, I think. So I'll use ZFS. I'll just use basic Stripe configuration. 
I'll specify my virtual disk and then I'll just basically be formatting that. And now the installation is actually going to happen. So here you might see me just skip around the video uh, whenever we have any type of new prompt. All right, now we can actually change the root password if we, if we want to. So I might just do that. And just for my lab, I usually make it TMB123. And that's been changed. So we can just complete the install now. So I'll exit and reboot. All right, and now the installation is actually finished. So it's just quickly going to reboot the firewall again. And there you can read after it reboot, open a web browser and navigate to the IP address that it's automatically assigned. And then you can actually do some stuff. Um, and it's also nice because this also by default allows you to connect on using a certificate like HTTPS. So you're not connecting over plain HTTP. You're actually a little bit more secured when you're getting onto this firewall. Now we're just waiting for the boot process to finish again. All right, that was actually a little bit quicker than I thought. Uh, usually if you just reboot the firewall, it also takes a little bit of time to actually start. But let's just see, we can see EM1 has obtained an IP address or it has an IP and then EM0, which is my WAN, has that IP, which is for breakout. That's my hypervisor's network. All right, so in theory, I should actually be able to get onto my Ubuntu VM now and I should have obtained an IP address from this device. So let's just quickly check if that is the case. I see it is wired connection. Let me just turn this off and turn it back on. And then I'd like to just have a look at my settings. And let's just see what's going on here. All right, so I have obtained an IP address of 192.168.1.100. So this is an IP I received from the OpenSense firewall. So let's log on to that. Navigate onto my browser and I'll go 192.168.1.1. I'll hit enter. It tells me, hey, potential security risk, but this is just because we're connected on HTTPS and this is using a self-signed cert. So we'll just accept the risk and continue. And now we can log in. So my password is root and my, or my username is root and my password is tmb123. And ta-da, we're in the OpenSense firewall. So now it's actually just going to be running a quick setup wizard to just help us get some basic settings from the beginning. I can give it a host name. I'll make this uh, emb-lab-o2-opensense. Domain, I'll leave blank. My primary DNS server, I might set as 8888, and my secondary is 1111. And if you tick this override DNS, it just basically allows the DNS to be used that you obtain automatically from an upstream if you're using something like DHCP or triple PoE. And let's just go next. And I'll just set my time zone as Africa Johannesburg because that is the area that I am in. There we go. And now we can set some stuff. So my WAN interface, it's configured for DHCP, which is fine. I'm not going to change anything here. Although I might just untick this block private networks from entering via the WAN because I do want to access this device on its private IP eventually from maybe my Windows computer or via some other ways. Let's just continue. Now it says you can set the LAN IP, so I'll leave it as it is currently. It's part of a slash 24 network. Uh, I'll just leave this blank or I'll type in the password confirmation, but I won't change anything there. And now I can reload. And now the setup wizard is done. So this is the very basics of getting your firewall installed. Now I'm actually going to walk you through some additional steps that I feel like just helps fleshes out your firewall a little bit. So let's just navigate back to this lobby because this is where you can find additional stuff like your dashboard, license, your password, or logging out. Now, if you go to the dashboard, this is what you'll see. It's very bare bones um, at this moment. It will give us some nice information like what our gateways are, what our interfaces are, what services are currently running on the device and your system information. I just want to have a look at this license as well, because this is just telling us that this is an open source license and it's just giving you a little bit of more information regarding it. But on this dashboard, I just want to make this a little bit more me. So I'm going to add and remove some stuff here. So first thing I want to do is just maybe extend how many columns there are so that there's more in the screen. And then we can also just move some of the stuff around. So I might just move the services stuff up so we can see this a bit neater. 
And to be honest, I might actually just get rid of the services widget so that I've got space for where my interfaces and stuff is and I can see my system information. I'm going to save the settings for now and then we can also just add more widgets if we feel like it. And here are some based widgets that you can add from the beginning. You can see stuff like the firewall logs. I might add that. And I could also potentially add a traffic graph so I can see how much traffic is being used on my interfaces. And I can actually just save my settings again. And now we can move the widget around. So I'm going to move my firewall logs also here on the left hand side. And my traffic graph I might just put in the middle. So this already feels a little bit more like me because now I can see what's happening with the network in general. I can see what my bandwidth usage is and I can also see my system information. So this is perfect for me. You can tweak some of the information by clicking on this pencil and I can say what type of stuff you want to see because maybe you don't want to see the traffic the LAN is doing. You just want to see how much traffic your WAN is doing. So I'll save that and now I'll only see how much traffic is coming into my WAN interface and how much traffic is leaving my WAN interface. So that is quite nice. This is just a basic overview of the dashboard. One thing I recommend is go to the update section. So you can click here for updates or you can go into your firmware by going to system firmware and you can go to, I think, status. And then from status, you can actually see what your current version is. And from here, you can check for updates. Now, why do you want to do that? Well, some plugins and packages might have dependencies on a newer version, and it also just helps you with getting the latest code and you know software updates and protecting against vulnerabilities and all that amazing stuff. So let's just check for updates and make sure there is, if there is an update that we can actually get it. And it will just check for updates quickly. And here we can see it did pick up that there is an up. Let's see here, it's 22.1. And now it's going to be upgraded to 22.1.9. And here it just gives you a nice little list of everything that's going to be changed. So this is awesome. This is actually telling us what's going to be happening with the updates that we're getting. So I'm just going to close this and let me look at the status. Oh, I was being silly. Um, so from this updates section, you actually just need to scroll down and you'll see the new version. And from here, we need to actually click on the update button. We need to say, yes, we want to update. And this is one of those little quirks that I had to figure out as well. So now it's actually going to download and install all of these updates. And this might take a little bit of time. So you'll see me skip ahead after this update process has finished. And just note that the firewall does reboot. So you'll actually see me just log back in after the reboot. So the upgrade has finished. So I can just log back into the firewall. And there we can see exactly what's going on. And we can now confirm we are on the latest version 22.1.9. So this is amazing. All right. So there's a few more things that I just want to go over with you guys. So you can see how cool this OpenSense firewall is. It has a large like selection of reporting you can go into. There's even NetFlow that you can set up. Um, we can have a look at the traffic reporting. And this is really just a bigger overview of what we could see with the, the widget. But it's nice that you can get into the Top Talkers report and you can actually see what's happening on the network. Because if you don't know about it, Top Talkers is basically like IP accounting that gives you a brief overview of what's happening at the network at this moment. And this is a great way to catch out a bandwidth hog. If somebody is maybe using a lot of the capacity of your links, you can see who it is and what they're doing. And then you can maybe make a plan around that, implement some forms of shapers. Your system just relates to your system itself. So here you can add users or enable SSH access. Uh, you can do configuration backups. The firmware section we just went to is where we can update our firmware. And you can also install additional packages or plugins. You can also configure uh, high availability. Similar as on the PFSense, you have your gateways. This is great for setting up stuff like load balancing or failover. You've got your basic routing configuration settings. Uh, which is just going to allow you to do some overview stuff and aesthetics and whatnot. Your logging is here and you can run the wizard again if for whatever reason you made a mistake. Your interfaces will relate to all of your interfaces, obviously. If you add any additional NICs, you just need to make sure that you go to your assignments and you assign them appropriately and then you can give them names and whatnot. You can also have a look at what's happening on each interface by just clicking on it and it will tell you exactly how it's been configured. You can also go to the overview which is basically just like a diagnostic and the status of the interfaces. So here you can click on this drop down arrow and it will tell you exactly what the MAC address is, MTU is, 
the IPv4 or IPv6 addresses and all the details that you want to see when you're trying to troubleshoot and see what's happening with the network. Um, if I go onto this WAN interface, perhaps your DHCP stopped working, then you can just click on this reload button and then it can attempt to obtain an IP address automatically again and get you some internet access. Um, we can also go into some settings and all of the stuff that you really want to play around with the actual interfaces of your open sensors on here. Your diagnostic tools you will also find here, great place for the ARP lookups, uh, net stat you can do here. You can also do pings and trace routes from the section. And then the whole point of the firewall is obviously your firewall section. So here you can set up your aliases. You can also set up NAT rules. You can do your actual firewall rules, which we will play around with some more in other videos. And you can apply some shapers and such as well. We've got a VPN section. So by default, it's got IPsec and open VPN configured or allowed. And that's about it. So services, you can set up a captive portal. Your DHCP is here. DNS masquerade is here. Intrusion detection, you can actually get here as part of the base installation. And just a few other nice tools. But services, in essence, is just like those additional tools that you load onto the firewall. So I just want to head back to the dashboard quickly. And I want to show you a cool feature. Um, even though I like this type of menu that we can select everything from, if you want your menu to be more accessible for some reason, uh, you can click on this arrow and then it will actually create all of these objects here. And then if you click on system, it has a drop down here of all of the available menus you can go into. But I kind of just like the sidebar that comes and then you can go where you want to go. So that's just a basic overview of setting these things up on the firewall. I want to change some stuff as well. So one thing I want to do is add a package to actually make this UI look a little bit nicer. So a little bit easier in the eyes actually. I want a dark theme type of UI. So what I could do is go into my system, go into my uh, firmware, and I can go to the plugins. And from the plugins, there's a bunch of different plugins you can find and install and make things cool or work differently on the firewall and just add enhanced functionality. You've got stuff like the FRR package, which is for the additional routing packages. You can set up iPerf on here for bandwidth testing, Zabbix monitoring stuff. There's the zero tier. You can add this as well. But as a baseline, what I just want to add now is it will be the OS dash um, theme. And now these themes are just basic packages or plugins to change some of the theme layouts of your firewall to make it more you. Now I like this rebellion theme because it is a dark based theme, which just makes it a little bit easier on the eyes, especially if you're working on these screens at night. So let me just add this, but there we go. It's extracted. Now that we have the additional theme, we can actually load it by going into our system settings general and now in general we'll actually have a tab now for the theme and you can set it either for the open sense theme or rebellion that we just downloaded so i'll set it for rebellion scroll down click on save and it's important that you always click on save when you make changes so it can actually apply those changes and now we have a nice rebellion theme it's nice it's dark we can actually see a bunch of different things here so this is so cool so now my lobby will also reflect that so if i go to the dashboards a lot easier in the eyes now to actually see what's happening let's just end this off by quickly just doing something like a speed test i'll just go to fast.com and then as this runs i should actually see on my traffic sensors how the traffic picks up i can see what the incoming is or the outgoing in the sensor graph oh sorry i want to go to the reporting and traffic and from here let's go to the top talkers and then we can actually see what the top talkers report is like what was happening so here we can see the wan was doing a whole bunch of traffic and <laughs> it's so cool i love this and back at the dashboard with the firewall logs we can actually see what traffic is being allowed or blocked or what's going on so this is again just a very basic overview of the firewall um, another thing that i do recommend is if you're starting out with this and you're completely new make sure that you join the open sense uh, reddit community at the very least and also here at the help section, you can just open up this documentation or the user forum and just bookmark these because the documentation is obviously going to be your best place to get all of the information that you want. Anything that you want to try and figure out to set up, it should be in the documentation. And the same thing with the forums. If you want to ask a question, this is where you can come and just 
ask the question, tell people what you want to try and do if the question hasn't already been asked, and then potentially somebody can help you out with that. All right, so this is where we're going to end off this video. This is just a basic and quick overview of how you can configure OpenSense and how you can get it running and kind of make it just look the way that you want it to look and get around some of the settings and such. I hope you've enjoyed. I'd like to thank my Patreon and YouTube members for supporting the channel. And obviously you guys, the viewers, for making it possible for me to just make these videos because I enjoy making these videos for you guys. I love sharing this technology and solutions and such with you. So. In the next few videos, we'll continue building off of this foundational OpenSense firewall that we set up where we can start building rules and routing and firewalling. I actually think the next video I want to make is regarding zero tier. So look forward to that. Catch you guys in the next video. Bye.